Okay guys, tonight we're doing dinner al fresco in the garden. This was my daughter's idea. She had a really good time helping me plant the garden trailer with flowers and now I'm making a few things for our dinner. And the first thing I'm going to make is a, uh, instead of a peach crisp, I'm gonna do a pear and cranberry crisp, but I'm gonna be using the peach crisp recipe out of one of my favorite cookbooks, uh, five ingredient semi-homemade meals. Um, from Bobby Parrish. I don't know if you watch him on YouTube or not, but I love watching him. So I'm going to be putting together this um, fruit crisp. And it gets made in a cast iron skillet, which is perfect because I love to cook things in a cast iron skillet. So it calls for peaches. I've got pears. So that's what we're using. And I only have these two little pears. So it's going to be like half the size of what the recipe calls for because it calls for quite a, it calls for four to five medium to large peaches so i'm just going to use two small pears and then just to jazz up the pears a little bit i'm going to add a few frozen cranberries so first things first we had to preheat the oven to 350 and i've already got that done and then uh, you can peel or not peel i may peel a little bit of this skin and i think my peeler is right here and so we just need to get these guys sliced up Let's see if i can get them sliced up yeah they're still nice and firm which is good because it says the recipe says you want them a little bit firm for baking which makes sense so they don't just fall apart right and i may just take off some of their skins sometimes these particular types of pears the skin can be a little top even after they get cooked so i'm going to take off not all but just some of the skin so i'm just going to get these guys sliced up and i am just like i cut them in half and then set them on an angle and just do one swift angled cut down to get the core out and that works for me they don't have to be very pretty slices because, you know, they're going to get cooked down anyway. This one's a little bit softer. I just realized I'm not wearing an apron, but you know what? Today it doesn't matter because I have my work clothes on that I've been doing gardening in and house cleaning and other things so it doesn't even matter if i get stuff all over this outfit because it is very dirty oh there's the oven I, I don't know if you could hear it over the microphone but um our oven is hot and waiting for us which is fantastic and i think with this um recipe we cook the veggie or the fruits in the cast iron skillet a little bit first which kind of sounds like fun so i'm going to go ahead and preheat my cast iron and get that warming just a little bit and i'm just slicing up these guys you know i thought this was not going to make very much because i only have the two pairs but this one may actually make plenty. Look at this pile of pear getting created here. Okay, so I have a decent pile of pears. All that's garbage. And it wants me to place them in a 10 inch cast iron pan with one and a half tablespoons of ghee. If you don't have ghee, you can just use butter until they soften about 15 to 20 minutes. So I've got those in there. I'm gonna get some ghee. Let me show you what that looks like. There's the ghee. Just get these guys cooking. And now we need to move on to the crumble, the crisp that goes on top. And for this, we are going to 
take a cup of almond flour. Mine's from Thrive. I started using Thrive when during the pandemic, but honestly, I still use it even because, because we live a solid 20 minutes away from a grocery store. So don't feel like going, oh yeah, I'm going to drop in about, I don't know, half a cup or so of cranberries into that skillet with the pears and the Okay, so I've got my one cup of almond flour, and then I need a cup of organic oats. I've got these gluten-free oats. All right, got a cup of that. And these are three tablespoons of maple syrup. One. Two, and that's perfect because that's about what I have in this jar. What's next? A little bit of vanilla extract. Two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Hey guys, slight video issue there. You didn't get to see me put the two teaspoons of vanilla extract or the seven tablespoons of grass-fed ghee into the crumble and mix it all up with my hands but I did do that, so you'll just have to trust me. So here is our kind of slightly cooked pear and cranberry mixture. And so now I'm gonna top it with our topping. And I'm gonna do a little bit about what the recipe said, which was to mix it with my hands, just to make sure it gets good and crumbly. And then I am just going to go ahead and cut off the heat and then crumble it all over the top. Now, I grew up going to grade school in Iowa, and I remember very vividly pear, uh, apple crisp from school hot lunches in Iowa. I don't know if you remember that. But I have forever been in search of one of those recipes. Um, the school I went to was in Pella, Iowa. And what I wouldn't give to have the school lunch cook's recipe for that um, apple crisp. We used to trade things, you know, to get more servings of it. It was so good. All right. So anyway, this is my, you know, iteration of that and now we're going to pop it in the oven and let it cook okay it's time to put our beautiful crisp into the oven and it's 350 in it goes and it's supposed to cook for 30 minutes i'll be back yes it does Guys, this turned out really good. So we scooped this up, put it in a bowl. We did top it with a scoop of vanilla ice cream. Oh, caramel sauce and sliced almonds. So after we had our crumble all prepared and we made a, a dinner as well, it was a green chef meal this night. I didn't show that in the video, sorry, but I was exhausted after a day long of laboring around the house and garden. So. Um, we took our meal and now our dessert down to the garden where we just kind of enjoyed the nice weather. It was unseasonably comfortable outside, so we were enjoying it and it was sunset. Um, and the, I can tell you that this crumble, this gluten-free fruit crisp was quite delicious. And I will make this again. And really you could put any fruit you wanted to in this. You could do this with blueberries, cherries, apples. I did it with pears and cranberries. You could do it with peaches. It really doesn't matter. Just substitute whatever fruit you like in for the peaches in the recipe in Bobby's book. And I think you'll be really happy. 
I'll also put a link to Bobby's book on Amazon down below. I've made quite a few things out of it and um, they've really, really good. is gorgeous. Okra's like sunflowers, they point towards the sunset. Guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for enjoying this evening dinner with my family al fresco in the garden. And this is what makes that gardening worth it. So if you like the video, make sure you hit the like button and make sure you subscribe. I could really use some subscribers out there. Don't forget, if you wanna hit notifications, then you'll always know when I've posted a new video. Bye guys.